Right, something a little bit different from the old radios. This is a Farnell L30DT dual power supply. It sticks out uh, 30 volts per channel um, up to about 2 amps I believe. Now I bought this the other day on eBay for uh, just under £40 delivered which I thought was an absolute bargain. The seller showed it working. Uh, how working it is I don't know but both um, in the photos both meters were indicating and I could see he had the voltage turned up so I assume it is working um, to some extent. Uh, it has got a few issues, probably why it was a little bit cheaper. Um, it's had these two terminals bashed off for whatever reason, I don't know. Um, it's got a little bit of a must be a soldering iron burn I think on this uh, meter here which I've tried to polish out with not much luck um, this meter doesn't seem to zero or start uh, maybe it's out of balance or something the metal works a little bit bashed if I didn't just mention that but um, yeah these are great great power supplies if you see one working grab one they are built like an absolute tank um, you've effectively got two power supplies uh, completely separate you've got two transformers in there um, this is all the switchery now I'm gonna look inside and show you inside I'm probably gonna go to handheld on that one little uh, note as I was looking around it I didn't spot it was I think it used to belong to Syrah which was the Scientific Instrument Research Association um, up until the 70s I guess I'm not saying it is, I'm saying it might be now that was formerly known as the British Scientific Instrument Research Association but um, during the 50s or 60s I think it just became known as CIRA the back here you can see there's a large shield behind here is a big heat sink it's got voltage tappings from 210 up to 240 obviously we want it on 240 we've got fuses for the output and a fuse for the input here mains input as well as obviously in the UK we've got a fuse in our plug what fuse that is I don't know and I should check that first before powering the thing up so I'm going to remove the handle and we're going to have a look inside and see what the damage is Right, here we go. This is the uh, unit with the cover taken off. This is one of the control stabilisation boards here. The uh, bridge rectifier there. The quality of the uh, work in here is, is excellent. You know, as, as you'd expect really, these, these power supplies were bought by colleges and universities, schools, uh, industry and um, when I bought it I suspected like I guess many of them this would be a high hours unit and um, I did watch another guy's video on these and uh, he had a problem with this bank of uh, smoothing capacitors here and as I suspected I have problems as well I don't know if you can see but this one's vented this one's vented and both of these are on the well that one has and that one has but this one is the worst one by far you can see a little bit or I can a little bit of um, uh, electrolyte on the top of this mains transformer on well yeah on top of the transformer cover here and um, in anticipation of that once I knew I'd bought this unit and obviously I watched this guy's video before I bought the unit just to see what they were like I actually went and bought uh, brand new uh, capacitors for this because I was probably going to end up um, swapping them out anyway so these are 2200 UF at 63 volts these are 2200 at 63 volts it's a massive size difference These are about five pounds each, I think. So quite expensive. Um, and I'd also got new terminals for it anyway. 
Now, unfortunately, these are slightly bigger than the ones fitted to the unit, but uh, better than nothing. So let's look down into the bowels of the unit. You can see the mains uh, neon indicator in the middle of the screen. Backs the siphon meters here. As I say, each each side of this is pretty much identical. So you, underneath here, you've got two big mains uh, transformers. Moving to the back, you've got this huge great heat sink with the pass transistors attached. You've got eight transistors here. You've got two, one after the other down here. And you just see the backs of one here and obviously one slightly below it. And the same on the other side. I just noticed it's got a, got a welling resistor. I don't know if you can see that. Got a welling resistor just there, wire wound. Right, um, so what I'm going to do is uh, power this up. I mean, the seller had powered it up, and uh, we'll see what uh, what happens. I'm just trying to look for a date on it. So I, I have got I have got the circuit for it here. That's upside down. There's the circuit for it, and you can see all the dates here. Look, 1969. 1970, 71. So let's just have a look at the board because these capacitors, I've seen those, they were in my tele equipment scope and I think they were either CFL or CCL um, and they have dates on them. So let me just swing this round with one hand and these, this is heavy as hell. These units are built like absolute tanks. Right, let's go around this. Oh yeah, there we go. Just see it. So CCL capacitor, and that was June 1973. This was built, or sometime after that. Little view of the board here. These capacitors will probably have to go as well. I think there's another electrolytic down the front there looking at the circuit. Uh, I can't spotted it as I'm filming this, but um, yeah, there we go. But as I say, absolute. I can hardly lift it with one hand, all like that. Anyway, just resting it like that. It's so heavy. So a useful power supply to have anyway when I get it working. Um, I've got another little weir unit here that I use occasionally. Um, and the main reason I bought this far now is that obviously some at some time in its life this one, the uh, wire wound pots failed in it and someone's put a 10 turn born pot in it. Uh, unfortunately that is not calibrated to the meter so I don't know what voltage this thing is outputting which is annoying and I've also got another meter down near my uh, sorry another power supply down near my feet which is sort of home built that I um, sort of built myself and that puts out 35 volts at two and a half amps but um, it's a bit of a devil to use but the meter is quite accurate on that but this will be a nice thing to have and um, we're going to change those capacitors out for sure and get the terminals fixed and um, hopefully she's a good one. But let's get, get the thing powered on first and uh, see what she does. Right, hopefully you can see this. I've got the uh, fluke powered up here. Um, right, I've put the lid back on the unit as well just in case those capacitors go up. Right. Here we go, both, both outputs are off at the moment. Ah, right. Yeah, we seem to have some sort of power there. Let's turn the outputs on. We've got about 9 volts there, so the meter is a little bit out. Let's see what the maximum it does is. Oh yeah, she goes all the way to 30. So, so the meter's a little bit out, but 
Not bad. Let's try this side. This side's a little bit more awkward. At 1.3 volts. Let's turn it up. I don't want to short. Yep. 15.8. That's that meter's pretty accurate. Or 16. 16. Yeah, it's a little bit out. Let's see if she goes all the way up. Yep. Right. I don't want to stress it any more than that. Let's wind it back down. And uh, back down. Right. And I'll whack that off because I don't like leaving those capacitors like that. They could go bang. You never know. Right, so it looks like we've got a working unit anyway. Um, with the exception of those smoothing capacitors and mechanically the output terminals here, which as I say I've got slightly annoyed that I've got wrong ones. But um, as you can see, or as you will go to see in about two seconds, these are slightly bigger than the you can't see. Right, these are slightly bigger than the originals. These are quality cliff components. But better to be safe than sorry. And um, I'll see if I can find some point a wrecked unit with some better sized terminals so they all match. But it, that is only cosmetics. And talking of cosmetics, um, that's what I'm going to do tonight, I think, is clean this up, do some metal bashing along here, get the lid all squared up and give the unit a good old clean because I do like my test equipment to be nice and shiny and clean because it performs better. Right, so part two, we'll get into um, changing the capacitors and uh, we'll have a nice shiny unit by that time. Alright, thanks for watching.